Hey, what's up everybody? We got another radio to look at here today. This is the GA510 uh, from Radioddity. They sent this over for me to take a look at and do a review on. Uh, and we're going to do a honest review. And as always, all of my reviews are done uh, without any uh, prior approval uh, from the manufacturer. Uh, what I find is what I find, and what I post is what I post. So uh, whether they send this radio over or I buy one on my own, the review is the same. Um, so they sent this over. Uh, I believe this is uh, similar to the GC5, except this is a 10 watt version. And uh, we'll take a look at it on the spectrum analyzer and the O-scope in just a couple minutes. Uh, first, I want to switch over here and uh, just show you what uh, came in the box. Um, I received an instruction manual. I received two uh, 2200 milliamp hour batteries. And uh, we will take a look at the battery analysis on these uh, at, towards the end of the video. Uh, you get a earphone microphone little speaker mic that comes with it, uh, a lanyard, a belt clip, of course the radio and antenna, a programming cable which is nice, and a drop-in charger and uh, plug-in power supply for the drop-in charger. Uh, these batteries uh, do not have uh, USB-C charging, um, so they need to be charged with the drop-in charger. All right. Let's head over to the bench and see what this radio looks like. All right, so let's get this radio turned on. Welcome. Frequency mode. It's got uh, one of more of a uh, monochrome display. Nothing fancy. The radio does feel rather solid. Uh, feels good. So let's go ahead and get this antenna taken off and uh, get set up here to take a look at it on the spectrum analyzer. As always, we're going through uh, 50 dB of attenuation, 40 dB and then 10 dB. I am going through this little extra piece of RG316 just so that I don't have to screw this attenuator in and out of every radio uh, to avoid some wear and tear. So let's start off here. Right now what we have on the display is uh, just looking at the spectrum between 100 and 800 megahertz. And uh, we'll, we'll jump over to the harmonic display in just a second, but I just want to key up and see what this radio looks like. Uh, let's see here. What are we on? Menu. Power wise. One thing I, I have noticed about this radio is I feel like the menu is just a little bit sluggish. Like, well, then it's going to make a liar out of me. <laughs> it seemed like earlier I was pushing this and it seemed to take a little bit, but now it's working great. All right. So we're at high power and let's see what it looks like. Wow. Initial thought is it looks pretty darn good. That was on high power. Let's, uh, Menu. Power. this one does have high, medium, and low. Confirm. So we will look at low power again here. Hello, am I not hitting the, there it goes. Hmm. All right, on uh, low power, looks like uh, still pretty clean. All right, so let's hop over to harmonic measurement. And of course, we're going to go to 146.5. And we're going to look at the first five harmonics. Generally, we don't need to look too much lower than that. So here we are, low power, two meters. Looks like we're getting about 2.9 watts out on low power. Um, and look at those harmonics. They look great. Uh, second harmonic is 58 dB down from the fundamental. And the third is 87 dB and the fourth is 97, 99. Wow. That looks great. So they are all 40 dB down from the fundamental. Uh, and they are all under the 25 microwatt line. So we pass on both criteria on low power. Menu. 
Menu. Power. Confirm. There was a little bit of that lag I was talking about where uh, it took a second for it to respond there. All right, this is medium power. Medium power, we're getting uh, 4.7 watts out on medium. Harmonics look great. Uh, second harmonic is 65 dB down from the fundamental. And third and fourth are 88, 89, 90, 100 uh, down from the carrier frequency. So uh, both significantly, all, all harmonics significantly under the 25 microwatt line. Uh, looking great. This this is a, so far a great example when you look at some of these other radios, especially when I just did that that uh, video recently on the TDH3. Phenomenal little radio. Just uh, having a little bit of a struggle on getting the harmonics consistent uh, is, is the issue there. So let's uh, Menu. Power. go to high power. Confirm. On high power. We're getting about 8.1 watts out on high power. Second harmonic is 66 dB down from the fundamental. Uh, everything is below the 25 microwatt line. Uh, everything looks great. This radio gets a pass on two meters. Uh, looks excellent, actually. So uh, just for fun, we're going to go over to the 70 centimeter side. And we'll go back up here. 443 megahertz. And we'll start off on low power. Whoops. So on 70 centimeters, low power, 1.5 watts. Uh, second harmonic is 70 plus dB down from the fundamental, as well as the third and fourth harmonics. Everything looks great here, all significantly below the 25 microwatt line. We will go up to, oops, power. Mid, Confirm. mid power, 3.94 watts, almost four, almost four watts, uh, and then fundamental frequency looks good, and then the uh, second, third, and fourth uh, harmonics are all below the 25 microwatt line, and uh, all way more than 40 dB down from the fundamental. And uh, we'll finish up. Menu. Power. Confirm. Here is high power on 70 centimeters. 6.6 uh, .6 6 watts about. And uh, of course, the harmonics look great. So uh, this radio passes all the way around two meters and 70 centimeters. Looks really clean. Um, let's just uh, take a look over on the O-scope. So give me one second to get it hooked up to the O-scope, and we'll just take a look and see what the uh, waveform looks like. Hopefully it looks as clean as the harmonics do. So give me one second. Okay, so we are now looking at the oscilloscope. We will go back to 2 meters, drop down to low power. So here we go, low power, and uh, that looks pretty, pretty nice. As you can see, we're right on frequency, and the waveform looks nice and clean. Menu, power, confirm. Medium power, still looking pretty good. Menu, power. High power. Let's uh, adjust for that a little bit here, and that still looks uh, looks pretty good on the waveform there as well. Um, we'll just uh, pop over here to 70 centimeters. We'll just start on high power. Uh, once again, that's looking looking pretty nice, right on frequency. Menu power. Confirm. Medium power. Still looks good. Nice and clean waveform and power. low power, 70 centimeters. Uh, once again, looks good. All right, so uh, 
let's head back over to the desk and we'll wrap this up. The GA510 uh, seems to perform pretty well. It's a clean radio. Uh, I was going to put in a little segment here showing you how it worked with Chirp, but I can't get it to work with Chirp. Um, I did download their software uh, from their website using the cable that was provided in the box, and it did connect uh, fine with that software. Um, I did some quick searches, and it appears that other people are having the same problem with newer GA510s and Chirp uh, compatibility. So I'm not really sure what's going on there, so I can't really uh, address that. Um, but I'm currently in the process of finishing up the battery analysis on this, so I'm going to insert it here. Okay, we're gonna insert the battery test here. You can see that the two batteries that come in the kit are very closely matched. The batteries are rated at 2200 milliamp hours. You can see here I ran four separate tests on these batteries, and they do not reach 2200 milliamp hours. Battery one, with a one amp load, reached 1634 milliamp hours. Battery two under a one amp load reached 1620 milliamp hours. Then recharging the batteries and running tests again, battery one with a 0.5 amp load was 1704 milliamp hours, and battery two with a 0.5 amp load was 1703 milliamp hours. I'm absolutely amazed at how close these batteries performed relative to each other. The, the curves are almost directly on top of each other. So from this information, you can see that the batteries do not make the 2200 milliamp hour rating, but they are very consistent. Um, all batteries were fully charged with the desktop charger before each test. The cutoff voltage was using the standard 3.1 volts per cell for lithium ion batteries. These are two cell batteries, so the cutoff voltage was set to 6.2 volts. Okay, back for the remainder of the summary. Other than that, uh, this is a you know, little bit of an older radio, but um, it is clean and looks great. Um, I'm not sure if this is an update to uh, GA510s that have been around for a bit, because uh, this is the first one I've had, so I can't say that the old ones are clean, but this one definitely is. So um, I will say seven threes, everybody. Um, I appreciate you being here and watching these videos and uh, commenting below. Uh, it all helps, and um, we will see you in the next one. Take care.